It's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Hashtag Event Icons. Presented by Endless Events. The show where you get to ask the icons of the events industry anything. So you might be wondering, how do you get to ask questions? All you have to do is use the question panel on the right of GoToWebinar to submit your questions. Or you can hop on Twitter to submit your questions with the hashtag Event Icons. We'll be answering your questions live during the entire show. Before we get started, the more people we have watching, the better conversation we can have. So please help share. Hashtag event. Awesome. And we'll tackle and so as a typical was coming from UK and a lot more about the uh, India industrial location I mean, uh, it's also a traditional when you think of a European conference type play, uh, places outside event tech is unfortunate they've gotten rid of the component and they're going to do the different companies online so one of the other team formats um, so here they have completely uh, but next year they're going to be on uh, you're going to be on you're going to be on because you know having in conference um, you know, still can be good get on plane so okay, uh, how that all pans out so, event tech was a huge uh, connect market place a bit uh, the, the old Wisconsin connect before I just connect market you know, they went every large region it's always in the middle there it's qualification for the planners it's a program so um, that might work now. I was in New Orleans this year um, some logistical problems this year they, they recently got their sorting a lot of that stuff. but the cool question nice people you know you can just tons of people um, that pare down a little bit next year because uh, there's almost two. the third one and I'll throw this in is, is IMAX America the first this year I love that nice <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a we, we work on a leader um, in my categories um, uh, it's definitely one of my favorite shows in the industry because it's, it's always more people in the industry and every year almost all of them are there uh, so for me, it's all about the people and, and I miss that one dearly hopefully, hopefully next year we'll get, be able to get back so that's my category of uh, industry uh, events I thoroughly uh, enjoy a really good quality events this year you know I, guess I didn't choose any industry I think if I had to pick an industry event IMAX America is very very old like, like you said everyone's there and uh, uh, unfortunately, yes, we were ones so we had to miss it this year, but also last year did a lot of show from it, and it was, I think it was just something to do, and hopefully we're going to return again to the show to be able to do it, but, you know, it was a, a bittersweet, and also, like, missing out. Like, just, are you? We're going to miss Laura there as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't able to go either, so I feel your pain. Um, I definitely think that I'm, like, immune to FOMO, but definitely just stayed <laughs> off Twitter for, like, a day or two just to see, just to not see the things that were happening there, so... Totally. Um, yeah, maybe next year. Laura, do you want to uh, go into uh, your first favorite event? Yeah. So the first event, which happened um, earlier this year, is uh, put on by one of uh, Event Icon's dearest friends, our friend Liz King, um, now Liz Crusoe, which is a uh, Taxi Talk Live. So for any planners who are watching the show and you're looking to get some high quality education around event technology and I mean really innovative technology. I mean everybody's using mobile apps these days, but um, you know, if you want to learn about, you know, chat bots, how can you use that in your everyday? Or if you're launching an event website, you know, that's kind of the the education that they dish out there. So uh there was a small trade show uh kind of uh hosted not, it wasn't a hosted buyer, but it was definitely a, a mini trade show if you will, um, with all technology companies. So Social Tables is there, met a lot of great um, new companies that are new on the scene. So if you're interested in testing out or are really uh, risk averse when it comes to trying out different technologies, this is a good place to see uh, what's new on the market. So that was a really fun one and the education is just solid every year. Um, I believe uh, Liz is already planning out next year's Taxi Talk. So if you haven't signed up, uh, definitely check it out. It happens in Manhattan every year. Uh, this past year was at Convene, uh, and I'm a big fan of those um, meeting spaces, uh, conference spaces, so definitely check it out. I love Convene. Mm -hmm. So cool. It's such a beautiful space, and I think they're expanding, or have expanded to Boston, and I think they're in Los Angeles now too, so um, lots of spaces. I think one great thing that Liz does with Taxi Talk too is that she really does get like the bleeding edge in there and allows people to play mm -hmm. with it and get their hands dirty versus it just being like, oh, hey, we're going to have someone talk about VR. But no, really, we're going to have an actual VR set up for you to play around with versus, mm -hmm. you know, like just talking about it. And I think that's very common in these tech conferences. It's all talk. and You don't get to actually see right. the technology. So mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think uh, Liz has also done a really good job at you know, you're making sure social table, make sure all the big players are there. So then that way everyone's represented and it's not just, you know, one or two companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the trade show component, it's, it's a little bit smaller. So 
you don't feel overwhelmed like you know you go into a huge ballroom and you can't really make heads or tails of who's in the room uh who should i talk to so it's much pared down than um you know your garden variety events trade show so you know you'll have time to talk to each of the vendors uh do a quick demo and then like some of those technologies i think they actually did have a vr company there i can't remember their name but um yeah, so you'll actually get to see some of those technologies in person and then make the determination for yourself if you want to use that at an event. So pretty good stuff. It's so important to have those spaces where you can test things and try things at scale. Uh, that's something mm -hmm. that's been driving me nuts about the industry is that we're so, yeah, so risk averse that, that you need to have those, those opportunities to try things and play with them and get your hands on them. And sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it's not. So huge. Mm -hmm. and, Big, big kudos to Liz for putting it all together. Yeah. And then just a, a word about that is for any planners who want to test out, you know, software and app or anything like that, definitely always ask the company, do you have a free trial? You know, if it's 14 days, you know, just, it never hurts to ask and see if they'll let you test it out for 30. Um, the worst that they'll say is no. Um, but at least you'll get the hands-on experience that you need in order to figure out if this is a worthwhile investment for sure. I love that tip of asking for trial extensions. I do it all mm -hmm. the time with softwares that like I'm testing out and things like that. And I found that, like you said, most of the time they'll say, yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they know that the more time you're going to get in it, the more likely you are to buy it. And obviously mm -hmm. you're showing that you're really interested in it if you're going to continue using it. So um, I, I think that's a really good antidote. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, what about you? Um, What's your favorite event? I like literally we started the show and I forgot all my three events and they all just like suddenly came back to me like a brick wall. <laughs> um, so uh, let's pick the first one. Um, so I'll pick the one that's not as obvious. So um, you guys have talked about industry events. I actually want to stay away from industry events and also primarily stay to events I've been to. There's been a couple events I consider my favorites, but I realized like I haven't been to them. I haven't experienced them. I haven't seen them like in detail. So I avoided those. So these are all events that I've been to. Um, so first event is uh, Adobe Max, and I think um, this event is awesome because obviously Adobe is a massive player in like the digital media space, and Adobe Max is like their user conference essentially for for people to really get their hands dirty um, with Photoshop and Premiere and everything like that. And so Adobe Max is literally all about how do you take people who literally create the greatest digital media pieces in the entire world, how do you impress those people and of course, the best way to do it is with AV in production, and that's why I love it. Um, and I love that event for that specific reason. Um, and I think that's why all these events I, I love is because of their production needs, but they all have different reasons for them. Uh, and one of my favorite setups is um, if you look at, uh, I think that we wrote about it on our blog like two years ago. I think it was 2000. 16 or not 2006 2015 they did this amazing video projection mapping setup and everyone sees video projection mapping you've heard of it and basically how you've taken surfaces but they what they did is they took a moving service surface and projection mapped to it it was actually these three like three-dimensional triangles they have an actual name they're called like petrographs or something like that but they're like three-dimensional tiles and they spun and turned so imagine hmm. like this like three-dimensional like origami like thing growing out of you out of the stage I should say and what it was cool is when it spun it opened up a door and that's how the presenters got in and off the stage but what was cool is as it spun the video tracked with it so we, at all times when you looked at it it looked like one clean video with it and it could do some really cool things with it you have to see the video big props to world stage who did all the production for it and they're like the best in video projection mapping and um, it was so cool, so mind blowing. And the way they did it is basically they used a motor that tracked how fast it was spinning. That motor servo data went back to a media server and sent that data saying, it's going this fast. You need to adjust the video this way. So it was like live computer animation. It was so cool, so awesome. It was like one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's really hard for production people to be impressed. Um, and I <laughs> love it. And I think that for all the people that were there too, you just gain see graphics fly across in this amazing digital media and high resolution. It was so cool. And I think it was super engaging. And I also think it was done really class classy too, versus like a lot of times people like try to figure out projection mapping just to do it. Um, and I think it sometimes becomes a distraction or it looks overdone. This was just really classy and simple and clean. So I really loved it. So that's awesome. Mind blowing. That's what it was. Mic drop. Okay. Thanks guys. Mic drop. Yeah. I don't know if I can follow, follow that up with anything that's cooler <laughs> than that. Well, I, I think we should, 
Go oh, ahead. sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say we we could pause for a moment here and answer uh, Karen's question that came in. Um, uh, Will, I wonder if you could expand yeah. a little bit on why the jump to Zoom um, uh, over. So uh, said uh, working with a few new clients to run events online to supplement venue events. Zoom has entered the frame as a digital venue candidate. Yeah. So any thoughts on the, mm-hmm. on the move to Zoom? I've got some thoughts for sure. But yeah, totally. Like- I guess like since the move kind of came on my end that I, I can explain it and then let these guys kind of jump on any thoughts they have um so um we use so we obviously this is our third platform we've gone through with this show first started off with blab which everyone uh if you remember blab a lot of people to chat simultaneously is four bank brady bunch style videos and that's what why we created the show is to test with that platform that's when laura got involved i mean that was like the classic days of blab and blab obviously shut down we had to look for a new platform i actually think blab was starting to have issues and that's why we moved away from it um and so we were like okay we're looking for the next step and we looked at go to webinar um, and the reason why we looked at GoToWebinar was because Ablab was starting to suck, but it had integrations with HubSpot and it allowed us to do send out email reminders and, you know, it allowed us to do a lot more things that we were not able to do before with Blab. Blab was like, we had to spl- spray and pray on social media to get people to join, um, uh, because there was no way to send email reminders. There wasn't any way to sign up and we didn't get to collect any, uh, data as well. So the nice thing about, um, GoToWebinar was a lot of stuff to do all that. And go to webinar had the question plat- platform and you know all these things like that and it was really great um, but it had a lot of limitations. Uh, first limitation is that um, the way you share computer audio sucked. So for us to do the intros and outros it was really difficult to do. So we have a newer way of doing that and we avoided it this time just because I think we we want we want to test it out probably before we do it. But um, it has a better platform that way. The second reason why is that Zoom also offers the ability to simulcast to Facebook Live and we were actually starting to play with that um, and we were starting to figure out how we could do that with go to webinar was going to be way too complex. It was going to be way too much of a pain in the butt. Um, so, um, you know, that was obviously like, okay, maybe we should not worry about this. And I think yeah, there was like lot. third party software involved. In yeah. It was like basically, yeah, we mm-hmm. used to basically capture and the screen running, and running, running, and running, rebroadcast running, it. It was yeah. like taking a, yeah. it was like taking a song, playing through a phone and sticking a microphone to it basically <laughs> right. for if, if, if you were to use an analogy to it. So, um, so that was obviously like, uh, we wanted to be able to fix that as well. And then the third part was, um, zoom also allowed us to take back a feature that we had in blab that we didn't have. And the reason why we're able to do this is that there's actually live chat that you guys are able to chat with us back and forth and also to other attendees. So there's also chat brought back. So if you're watching this on recording, your more reasons for you to watch live is that now you can chat with each other and network in the chat, which is really, really awesome. Uh, and really exciting to have that back because that was an amazing feature that we enjoyed in the first show. Um, other small things, better video quality, audio quality I've noticed is a lot better as well. Um, there's a lot of different things that we can do on this. So um, I'm really excited for this new platform. It's a little bit more resource heavy um, and it's a little bit um, not as solid as uh, GoToWebinar as to demonstrate by how long it took for us to get the Facebook Live to work today, but we're getting through it and uh, I'm excited for where it's going. So that's a long answer. I took too long answering that question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. The, I mean, the thing, and the thing that immediately for me is, is how easy it is obviously to drop into that chat. I mean, here we are doing basically the first episode and we've, we've got great interaction going on already. And, and so, and then combine that, one of the things that always kind of bothered me was not having that being able to just drop in. And so hope, hopefully with the ability to, to go to Facebook Live, obviously we want people to sign up. We want people to join us on Zoom. Um, but being able to just pop in, you know, is, is I think an important part of it. So that if you're not already signed up, you can kind of drop in and check it out and say, oh, yeah, this is cool. I should sign up for that. Yeah. In. Yeah. And I think that the integration with Facebook Live, I agree. I think that's probably one of the biggest selling points for me is because uh, we actually use Zoom at social tables. So, um, you know, for people who are trying to figure out a separate Facebook live strategy, how do we fit that in? But, you know, we were already doing videos. So I love that there's an integration and it's easy. So, um, all for it. So Karen, thank you for the question. And yes, ah, blab here and gone in a blink. You were right. Um, you know, I wish it did come back. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was okay. I think the concept was good. It just was a little buggy. It's yeah. usability, like the feet, it like had uh, stability issues. But other than mm-hmm. that, it was amazing. I mean, like we, like the, how easy it was to drop in and join chat was so quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. I think they, they were onto something for sure. Um, I think they just, like they couldn't figure out how to monetize it. And then they just, yeah. like, they started letting server issues basically ruin their uh, influencer base. Yeah. 
Oh, the one thing about Blab that I did love was being able to tweet out immediately a GIF of all the speakers yeah. and then a link back. So I felt like we always had people kind of coming in from Twitter just randomly, dropping in for two minutes and then leaving. So it was nice having that sort of link out there. That's true. So that was nice. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. All right. So uh, shall we get back into our uh, favorite uh, events? Um, let's, uh, let's flip backwards. Uh, and Laura, why don't you go with your second event? Oh, oh okay. First. Okay. Um, so this was, uh, this is an industry event here as well. So this is uh, Cater Source. Uh, Cater Source is probably one of my favorite industry events. Um, it's one of the largest events for caterers, as the name would hint. Um, and very similar to Taxi Talk and a lot of uh, event industry uh, conferences. You know, there's an education component and a trade show component. The education was great this year. Um, we, uh, we've been sponsoring that event for a number of years. Um, but, you know, so it's always great to catch up with friends and meet new people. Um, and, you know, obviously the food component is also really cool uh, to see which trends are coming out for, um, you know, a, event and catering food. Um, so, you know, one trend that I picked up on uh, was craft beer is huge. Uh, and I believe there was a session on um, pairings. So that's kind of a, a neat little thing that hopefully we'll see um, more at events because I'm a big fan of craft beer. Um, and then also, I would say more than anything, one of the coolest things about Cater Source is that it was hosted in New Orleans. So every year it's in uh, Vegas. But this year, I think it was their 20th anniversary. If anybody's watching and knows the actual anniversary, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so that was where the very first cater source happened. So I thought it was kind of cool to do sort of like a throwback and host it at the original city. And that was my first time in New Orleans. And that was a lot of fun, a lot of things to do. So uh, I, I don't, you know, there's the whole uh, designation of a tier one and tier two city, I think. New Orleans is considered tier two, but um, so if any planners are thinking about other cities to plan events in, New Orleans is a fantastic option. Lots of great local food, lots to do for attendees. So, um, you know, it's an all-in-one experience for sure. I thought that was ballsy for them to like switch cities because I mean like so yeah. often like location is a lot to come with an event you know it's so much cheap like, it's regional that sort of things like for mm -hmm. me to fly from Phoenix to Vegas is like super cheap but to fly to New Orleans a little bit more expensive I think I have to a couple right. layovers in there too mm -hmm. but I, think, I thought that was very that's very interesting that they decided to do that do you do you know like did, did their attendance kind of hold strong or did you know I believe it did. Yeah. I don't think they saw a huge dip in attendance just because it's one of the largest catering events. So, um, if you're a caterer, you know, nine times out of 10, you're going to go to cater source. So, totally. um, yeah, so I, I don't think they saw a huge dip in attendance, which is, which is good to see. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Brent, have you ever been to New Orleans before? I have. It's a, it's a fun town and that's actually where Connect was this year. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and, and you don't have to get caught up in the whole Bourbon Street thing. I mean, there's, there's, like you said, there's so many wonderful restaurants. I've had some of the best food I've ever had in my life in the few times that I've gone to New Orleans. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and so, some of that was 15 years ago. I mean, so it's, um, uh, you know, it's just new ways of stuffing amazingly good food inside amazingly good food. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and then, and and then, yeah, and then, but there's also, you know, a wonderful nightlife and everything, obviously, as well. Um, but much like Vegas, there's, there's, there's positives and then there's negatives, there's downsides as well. But, you know, you don't have to go anywhere near uh, the, the, you know, Bourbon Street, or you can get go down there and have a grand old time. Totally. It, it does, mm -hmm. New Orleans does remind me a lot of Vegas. Like, it's kind of like, it's got this party kind of attitude to it, but it's like, and I know like some people who live in Vegas are going to kill me right now, but it's like Vegas, well, <laughs> in my opinion, a little bit more culture to it because it's got a little bit more history to it and everything like that. So you feel like you you can go and explore and see this richness that when you're in Vegas, it's a little bit more focused on just the entertainment side of things. And that's just my opinion. Feel free to kill me, Julius. Well, there is that whole, <laughs> yeah, there, there's that whole history side of New Orleans that it's, it's, it's an amazing town and lots of things to look at and see. And so, yeah, absolutely. All right, Will, 
What's yours? Oh, wow. Damn. I was not prepared. Ah. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I'm coming back for you, Brant. Um, so my, my next event is uh, an uh, amazing conference. I think I've talked about like four or five times throughout the entire show, but it's uh, HubSpot's inbound conference. Um, so HubSpot, obviously I'm a huge HubSpotter, love everything about inbound. And that's a huge philosophy of my marketing strategy and everything I do. Basically they decided that they were going to create an event that wasn't going to be just the HubSpot conference, but was going to be more about this movement of inbound and inbound marketing. Um, and so I thought it was really unique because they actually created a team inside the company that is actually siloed separately, almost like a Macintosh team separately than the company saying that basically, Hey, like we don't want this to be the company to influence the content and vice versa and everything like that. There's obviously a big HubSpot keynote, but that's like the only thing. Uh, and it can be very much like they actually have competitors there. They have partners of HubSpot. It's very, very cool. But the thing I think that makes it very interesting, A, it's about the movement, um, and then second thing is that obviously the production is done really well. Um, I think they do a lot of really good th things to basically make it feel like a rock concert, to make it feel more like a festival. Um, one of my favorite parts of the production is that they have this thing called Club Inbound, which is basically like their exhibitor hall. And most people are used to exhibitor halls like, you know, grid system, boost, 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 pipe and drape everywhere. Boring, right? They said, we don't want to do that. Let's do things differently. So what they do instead is they give each vendor half of like a vertical tape, like almost like a what would you describe it? Like a, like a drawer unit or something like that. Like basically it's like a little wall with a TV mount on it. And then on the other side is another vendor and they're all floating. So no one has any physical boosts. They just have these kind of stands that are back to back with each other. And it's like all open space. So, and what they do is in right in the middle is a circular bar and a DJ and they blast music after the end of the day and have these gigantic happy hours and now throughout the day there's some light music playing and things like that but it feels so casual you actually feel like you can walk around whereas like sometimes when you walk through exhibit halls you feel like you're walking down a narrow aisle and you're gonna get like attacked by a vendor um i love this because it feels really casual you don't feel pressured to go talk to vendors you feel like I'm going to go talk to a vendor because I want to. I want to talk to a vendor because I like GoToWeber. I want to talk to a vendor because I like Wistia, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that's really, really cool. The content's really, really awesome. Um, and then I think they do the productions of their breakout rooms really well. They, they elevate them a little bit with some lighting, with a little bit better video. They record all their sessions. I think it's just a very well-polished system. Um, the last thing I think that they do really, really well that – I'm starting to notice more as I've gone to other conferences is their registration systems run so smoothly. And uh, I forget who all does the registration system. So I apologize. I'm sure we can find that out, put that in the show notes, or you can probably just Google and I'm sure there's a case study on them. But basically they made it super simple for you to check in, get your badge, it takes like two seconds. But then what happens is before the sessions even start, you actually register for all of them beforehand. And so what's great about that is you show up and for the first like 10 minutes before the presentation, uh, or I think it's like the uh, first 20 minutes, basically the people who have already signed up can walk right on in. They get their badge scan, they get a seat right in. And then if you didn't pre-register though you wait in a line and i think for conferences like this where there's obviously a high demand to go see like Rand fishkin and these amazing marketing people that there ends up being lines if we didn't have this like control aspect i think it'd be purely chaotic but i think they do a really good job doing it um it's really well run um and i think that the way they do encore sessions too of the most popular sessions allowed me to catch sessions that i couldn't see because they were on the same time as other ones it was just really, really well run. Um, I highly recommend if you like marketing, it's a conference to definitely check out. Also, I think Boston's a great city if we're talking about great cities for things to be in. Uh, I think they just do a really, really good job uh, for that conference. So that's my high horse of story of inbound. Anytime you can get a fresh take on something, whether like an expo or something along those lines where it's not just the traditional thing and, you know, people standing in their booths saying, do you want a squishy ball? You know, it's, you know, it's something, something to change things up a little bit and, and really move things around. I think anybody, you know, there, there should be commendations for that. You know, you get, you get extra, extra props for that. Totally. And I, I mean, it definitely, it feels like when they call it club inbound, I didn't understand. I thought it was maybe just like a label, a name, but it's really, they turn it into a club. They're like, uh, their happy hours, I think are like from five to like 7 PM. But it's like, if you have a pro or like the, 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 the all access pass or whatever it is, you get unlimited drinks. They're blasting music. It feels like a party could be in there and like they have club lighting and everything like that. It feels so cool. And it feels like you want to spend lots of time there, which is obviously the whole goal of exhibit hall. 
how do you think they're going to outdo themselves next year? Oh, so like that, that was a very interesting. So um, this last year I didn't go oh, because it was a conflict with another event that we had going on. So I didn't get to make mm-hmm. it to this year's event. Um, mm-hmm. And I was wondering that exact same question. I was wait, mm-hmm. I was watching for videos. I was excited to see what their stage set up because la- the, the two years ago when I was there, um, the stage setup took a big dramatic leap forward. They did some cool stuff with projection mapping. However, this last year, um, nothing really improved on the production aspect. Um, and, you know, it, it definitely, I, I was a little disappointed in watching the videos because I was like, I'm wondering if they really did amp it up. But then at the same time, you have to question this, that I was at you know, there two years ago and I thought it was really well run. It was perfect, quote unquote, you know, do you fix it if it's not working? Do you try to up yourself or do you get content and say, let's just focus on content and making this really good? Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think obviously we want to see something better, but at the same time, I think that I, as long as the content's good, I'm cool seeing the same stage setup. I'm cool seeing the same setup because then it ultimately comes around the people and the content. I mean, it's the goal of the content. So people are new iPhone and then it's iPhone the best. You know, you know so they, they're talking things, saying, you know, refine it. Big thing, refine it. Big thing, refine it. Big thing, refine it. Um, one, uh, they have the most interesting workshop. Earlier, we tried to have the airport set up. So, the first time in the middle of responding, saying, well, these are the funders. They were jumping up on stage. They did have the problem. You can find some security. 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 Um, for these performers, it's probably becoming a bigger and bigger challenge 
to make sure the person in the very dead last row is still as entertained as a person in the front row. And I think that's where, uh, you know, an event planner's job kind of comes into play or, you know, the AV team is figuring out, okay, what's the vision that you want to convey? Uh, how do you want attendees to feel? And then bringing in technology, uh, you know, projection mapping or whatever it may be. And then, you know, just kind of unleashing it and just testing out what works. Um, something that I'm finding too is that uh, I've been to quite a few bigger concerts where, uh, you know, they're actually doing the complete opposite. So I wonder like where, you know, where that whole sector like live music is going these days because I don't know if people feel like they can't top the last thing that they did and they're going completely bare. They're just going to have the band on stage and just performing. So I wonder where, I, I'm excited to see where that goes and what people come up with. I mean, I think the interesting thing about it too is that like we're in a day and age where a lot of people can like stick up at a phone, live stream it and watch the performance or the concert from home. And, you know, I have a nice sound system at home. That's almost just as enjoyable as being in the front row, if not better with 4K nowadays. Um, you know, how, can, how do you top this and make it worth people to continue to spend hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars to go see your favorite band? So only time will tell. Only so, time will tell. So I think that's all nine events. Yeah. Did we miss any? Mm -hmm. Yarp. So hopefully you guys enjoyed us sharing our favorite events. Obviously, we talk a lot about events here. I figured we'd share our favorite ones. Um, but before we end, um, Will wanted to still do the resource section. So we still want to share some of our cool favorite resources. Um, and so I'd love uh, for us to kind of go through and share some of the cool resources, blogs, or things that we've been finding in the last uh, couple weeks. So uh, let's uh, kick it off with Brant. Brant's always got something interesting. Well, I mean, this is, this is not anything new. And in fact, it's been a trend for a while, but it's something that I've just personally decided to start experimenting with. And that is just taking that moment for uh, a quiet meditation and just, you know, really. Uh, so I've, I've started playing with around with the app uh, Headspace that I know is really popular for a lot of people. A lot of people really like it. Um, I, it's hard to do on the road. But I'm trying to at least do it when I'm home and, you know, I've got that kind of office hours it's easy then to take five minutes and, and just do it. And it is it is kind of interesting to see the level of kind of focus that you start to get from that, um, that you just kind of starting your day with that helps you uh, really, you know, find that center, find some focus and then, you know, charge on with the day from there. Um, so so for me, you know, it's still new, still trying it out. Um, uh, again, I don't know how be how much I'll be able to do it, you know, when I'm on the road, but uh, I mean, I'm enjoying it, and and have had some kind of interesting epiphanies from, uh, uh, you know, the, that 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 uh, those those quiet moments where you just kind of let things wash over you. Ooh. I I know I know like the the meditation stuff's been really hot. I think I've talked about it a couple mm -hmm. times. Huge fan of Headspace too. So if anyone's listening hasn't heard of Headspace, definitely check it out on the road is the hardest part. And that's why I always yeah. lose my like momentum is yeah. I get on the road and I'm like, Oh gosh, you know, I got to get to this general session by 8am. It's six 30. Need to get breakfast. Still got to go walk over the hotel, the convention center, all that stuff. Um, yeah. But I'm, the same awesome. with exercise, exercise, that's tough too. I mean, we were talking about that pre-show, you know, that that's something maybe we can talk about at some point is, is staying healthy. It's like we have an episode coming up at the beginning of the year that's mm. going to be part two to an episode Aww. we've done before <laughs> around 40 episodes ago. We'll find out next time I'm back. Um, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is called a tease. A tease. <laughs> um, speaking of a tease, um, I'm going to like tilt my webcam down just a little bit. Sorry. But my favorite thing is this thing today. Uh, I recently got a – I went to Switch Windows, as I said, last week. And you can always ask me how that went the first week. Um, but I also, <laughs> fortunately, got to now experiment with what are called mechanical keyboards. And if you don't know what a mechanical keyboard is – um, Google it and look up the difference between a mechanical keyboard and like a membrane keyboard, all those things like that. Mechanical keyboards have those clicky feels of like an old typewriter, basically. And this is the first time I've ever had a mechanical keyboard, I think, beyond when I first, my first ever computer. Um, and I never thought about it, but the typing experience has been amazing on this. And one of the coolest things ever, I'll show you guys this, is that this is the Corsair K70 uh, keyboard. And it's a gaming keyboard, but it does these cool lighting programs. So right now it's like doing this fade, but when I type a key, it does these freaking cool <laughs> ripple effects. I'm trying not to accidentally hit a key that's going to break uh, this. 
but does these really cool ripple effects as you're pressing things. And so as you like kind of do it, it does these cool lighting effects, which as a lighting guy is just super cool to do. Um, <laughs> but I, I love it because it makes, it's just a little cool experience and the typing, uh, the, me the actual physical mechanical aspect of typing is amazing. So paired with the cool lights and the cool feeling of it, it's been awesome. I've been really enjoying it. Um, so that's my like new favorite thing that I've been back in the home office for a little while. I'm getting to enjoy it. So Corsair K70 or just Google mechanical keyboards. Awesome. I was diehard mechanical for a long time. I literally had like a stack of five that I kept, you know, from people trying to get, you know, throw them away or whatever, because they were like the old school IBM tickety tackety keyboards. And at some point I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm moving on. The technology is moving on and now they're hip again. Like I should have just, <laughs> Them. it's like so but i've yeah i moved on and, and i actually i can actually touch type on an ipad so it's it's what yeah. wow yeah. It's, yeah, not, it's not perfect but i mean you can do it a little bit what i would love if there was just like a little nub like the tiniest little ridge like that you could flip over an ipad screen or something like that and you'd be able to type on that i don't because so i don't need the travel and all that kind of stuff but i think it's fascinating that that people are rediscovering the the power of the clickety clack keyboard Totally. I'm rediscovering that. I have to remember to mute myself too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. That was not meant to be a jab. Uh, <laughs> I have to remember to mute myself when I'm sitting on client calls. Cause I was sitting on client calls and be taking notes. It's they're and, loud. And, and I have yeah. this, this is the, I think these are reds. Uh, what there's like different, there's a brand that basically has different names of it. Depending on how clicky it is and how loud it is also. And these are like reds. They're supposed to be a little bit more silent and they don't have a click to it versus like blue switches. And, um, I still find they're incredibly loud. <laughs> so, so. All right. Laura, I, what resources do you have? Yeah. Um, I just learned a ton about keyboards. I did not know there were those different types. So I'm going to definitely look into that. Um, so uh, I'm excited to throw this resource in there. Um, so this is from, I don't know if she's ever been on the show. She should definitely be on the show if she hasn't been. But um, she's a dear friend of mine in social tables, Tira Endine. And she recently just came out with a brand new book, Intentional Event Design. So just going to give a shout out mm. to Tahira. Um, mm. And uh, it covers a couple of really big, broad um, areas of event design. And, but really at the heart of it is purpose-driven design. Um, you know, we know that we need to do it for our events. Um, and then, you know, for planners, and I think this is an ongoing theme, but I think that planners are still struggling with, um, you know, defining the value that they are bringing to, you know, a company, a corporation, or a client. Um, and uh, oftentimes, you know, the data around, um, you know, the value that we bring as planners, it's not really normalized. And we're not comparing apples to apples. And so I think that's what makes, you know, that, you know, proving the value really difficult. So she tackles all of these topics in her book. Um, I actually just bought it on Amazon today. Uh, so you can get it on Amazon. Uh, it's called Intentional Event Design. Um, and she also has some really awesome uh, pieces to the book. I took some notes. Um, one thing is about creating the brain experience. Uh, so more about, you know, why we do certain things, how we do it. Um, understanding that, you know, everybody's attending your event or arriving to your event with a brain and how do we sort of tap into that and engage each attendee. Um, and she talks about, you know, surprises and catering and, uh, you know, learning design. So I'm actually very excited to read her book. Um, so it's, I think she, I think it released at IMAX or yep. she announced it at IMAX. Um, so I think that's, that's a super cool resource for anybody who's a planner and are watching today's show. So, epic, epic, epic. To hear, to hear someone who I, lo I love dearly, she's a wonderful person. And intention number five, by the way, is particularly mm -hmm. interesting because it's it's written by someone you might know. Um, mm. Start with B and end with Grant. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, she actually, I actually had the opportunity to contribute to the book and I'm really proud to be a part of it because she's put, she's pulled together uh, a wonderful uh, group of people to, to put together this book. And I, and, and so yeah, amazing for her. So well, well done to Hira. Definitely adding it to my Amazon. I remember her telling me about it and I was like, I need to buy it. And then we had a crazy October and I didn't have a chance, but now that things are slowing down. That's going to be next book on the list. I want to put everything else to the side. So awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, um, 
that's our resources. But before we end the show, we do have some news to share. Uh, obviously, we're on a new platform. We have a new brand, but we do have some sad news to really share. Um, one of our co-hosts will be no longer joining us for the show. Uh, we, we wish a amazing goodbye to Laura Lopez, who is uh, uh, departing from the show as a co-host. Um, I'll let Laura, if you wish, I'd love for you to tie and tell everyone a little bit of what you're up to and why you're leaving because it's for amazing, awesome reasons. Um, and you have basically, you've been a co-host since there were co-hosts. You helped me basically restart uh, Event Icons when we were doing this weekly and I couldn't do it weekly, so I went to monthly for like two months and Laura said, no. <laughs> it has to be every week, and I'm going to make you do this and help you do this. And so Laura was a big reason why the show still exists today. It probably would be dead if it wasn't for Laura. So we have to give a humongous event icons hug and love to Laura because this wouldn't be possible without you. So really, if you do get a chance, reach out to Laura on Twitter and give her a big thank you because if you enjoyed any one of our episodes ever, she's the reason why. So make sure to give her <laughs> some love. But um, Laura, if you want to kind of tell everybody what you're going to be up to and kind of where you're going, if you wish. Yeah, um, so I'm leaving Social Tables, um, and I am actually going to another tech company. I will be doing a little bit of content, running their events program, so I will still be in the events world. Um, so maybe you'll see me on a future episode. I may come back as a guest co-host sometime. Um, so uh, still be, I will still be in the events world, so feel free to reach out. Still would love to talk shop uh, with any planners who are watching today's show at now or in the future so um but yeah it's been it's been a great ride i've had a lot of fun doing um event icons all this time uh well we, yeah. we give a huge thank you to you i mean literally it's like that for those who don't know this is all like volunteer basis we don't get paid there's like no like massive amounts of money being made from this we literally do this for you guys uh and laura like literally has blood sweat and teared her way through this and uh you know definitely someone who doesn't have full control of her own time sometimes too has made a way to be a host on episodes and come in there and be awesome the entire process so thank you laura for being on the show Yes, Thanks Laura, for you, having will be, me. you will be absolutely missed. You've been an integral part of the show and we really appreciate everything that you've done for it and making me feel welcome as I've kind of joined the team and uh, it's been, you will be, you will be missed. You will be, uh, I will miss with, all of you guys. <laughs> and with that, we're going to wrap up another episode of Event Icons. Uh, please be sure to sign up so that you can join us each week on the Zoom. Um, zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Uh, I just like saying Zoom. Uh, <laughs> So you can join us on the Zoom each week because that is going to be the freshest live version. Uh, as we mentioned at the top, we are trying to uh, uh, simulcast to Facebook Live. We're experimenting with that. Please let us know what you think about that. Enjoy. Don't enjoy. Think it's strange. Think it's interesting. Bring it. We want to know. Uh, please do join us live so that we can get your feedback live during the show. It's really awesome to interact with you guys. Thanks, Karen, for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it all the way from the UK uh, joining us tonight um, and all of your wonderful comments in, in the chat you can do that too um but then if that's not going to work for you sometimes you can't be here live you can subscribe on itunes we want to be where you are so if you can subscribe on itunes you can subscribe on pocket casts whatever your podcast player of choice is you can subscribe there please do that so you can join us and have us in your ears every week every week we want to be in every week <laughs> Join us every week. Not creepy at all. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next time on Event Icons. Ha! Wrong. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of Hashtag Event Icons. To catch the transcription and all of the resources mentioned, head to www.helloendless.com slash blog. This week's episode will be posted and available by next Tuesday. Also, let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Share your biggest takeaway and join the Twitter conversation sponsored by Alex Plaxon and Little Birds Hold Media. Just tag your post with Hashtag Event Icons. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on hashtag event icons.